to support the growth of Islamic finance in Nigeria. Financial experts believe there must be a collaboration amongst all the industry stakeholders to drive a robust and efficient way for Nigerians to access the products and services that Islamic banks have to offer. This is imperative as the country seeks to increase financial inclusion across the country, especially in the northern region, which has a large financially excluded population that are predominantly Muslim. Which is why the non-interest finance markets serve as a veritable tool for addressing the huge gap in the nation. In this edition of the Islamic Finance Weekly, the conversation continues as we look at improving accessibility to Islamic banking products and services in Nigeria with Mr. Mohammed Jida, Ed Sharia Audit and Product Development of SunTrust Bank Nigeria Limited. From your expert knowledge, how can the knowledge and understanding of the Islamic finance increase in the country? What is Islamic banking? Simply Islamic banking is a banking system that is based on the principle of profit and loss sharing. Also is a partnership between the bank and their customers. They share profit and risks. Also Islamic banking gain their profit by selling of goods and services, which when they gain profit, they share it equally about 70, 60 or 60, 40, based on the agreed ratio. Answering your question, lack of awareness of Islamic banking is one of the tools that is driving non-interest banking backward. So what is the way forward? First of all, we need to establish an Islamic financial institution in our country, Nigeria. We have only two Islamic financial institutions right now, the one in Bayero and the one in Kwara State. So what is the other state are doing now? So more of Islamic financial institutions are needed. Also, we need, and we need to organize some seminars, conferences, workshops, also give scholarships to students who are willing to study this field. We don't have this in Nigeria for as far now. So the main thing to do, organize a seminar on structuring the product, knowing the product dynamics, the future of the product. That is wonderful for us to know what is all Islamic banking is about in the country. With this, I think we can move forward for the awareness and people will be well organized and know each, each of the product they are in being. So when a customer came to the bank, he need to know what is Mudaraba. This is an Arabic terminology. So for the bank to make it an easy, they will just say a profit and loss sharing product. That is very good. So we have many products in the Islamic banking and finance. We have the Qabdul Hassan, we have the Musaqa, we have the Muzara. They are all in Arabic terminologies. So you need an interpreting interpretation for all of these products. For that, awareness will be very easy for the customers and we can move forward with that. Now, having given us the background on how the knowledge and understanding of Islamic finance can be increased in Nigeria, what is SunTrust Bank as a stakeholder doing to improve the accessibility to Islamic banking services and products in the country? For SunTrust as a fintech bank, we do different from other banks. You know, Islamic fintech is one of the catalysts and indicators that we drive the financial sector today. So as a SunTrust bank, as a fintech bank today, we have a smartphone. When you have a smartphone, you can bank at any way on your terms. That is the easy way we try to do it in SunTrust bank. By creating many of the products, we have a product which can be only using your phone. Also, we have a product which we call the, the Tolia. Also, we have a product which is called Musawama. Also, a product which is called Wabia, a risk sell with a loss or a low rate. That is how we try to make diversification of the product to some cross bank to make it easier for to get access to the banking system. So, do you have plans for millennials and people in the rural areas? Yes, in the rural areas, we try to engage the communities and provide them with some capital and also engage them to, on, on programs like uh, on how to use the mobile phone banking. So, and we try to give uh, uh, like the small, medium and businesses, give them some small capital and try to observe them and see how they manage their work. Also try to advise them on how to keep a little saving of their money in the bank. In terms of product development, what can be developed in the areas of insurance, banking, and even savings to deepen Islamic finance in the nation? Okay, in terms of insurance, you know, we have the alternative Islamic insurance, which is the based on the nation, Tabarru. 
Also, we can try to make what is called the crowdfunding. The crowdfunding is about four stages. We have the Islamic donation crowdfunding, Islamic donation, and Islamic donation reward, reward also. With this kind of structured product on insurance and banking, it will make it very, very easier for the on the bank and also on banks to tap in, in the system and get easy access to the banking system nowadays. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohammed. You see, technology has been described as a veritable tool that can help enable the growth of Islamic finance in Nigeria. What should be the focus of Islamic fintech in this regard as it concerns innovation and digital platforms? As you know, what is called Islamic fintech, Islamic financial technology, I think is the next wave of growth of non-interest banking. It's the time for non-interest banking to use fintech and engage with fintech. Of course, we don't have any option now unless this fintech to drive your banking system to the next level. Simply, the financial technology or Islamic financial technology is the process of developing or delivering the financial services investment through this innovative and operative system nowadays used to use in the banking system. Let me give an example of Wahid investment. Wahid investment is one of the financial technology or Islamic financial technology tool that is used in Pakistan and also used in some of the Asian countries. It makes it easy for the people who are on the bank who are financially excluded from the system. Okay. Yeah, excluded from the system. When you have just a mobile phone, there is a key number you will dial. Is it one zero three? You will just see an option of all the Islamic banks. You click the Islamic bank that you need with one option or two options. It will take you direct to an ATA one opening account. Very easy, simpler, and just at that moment, you will open an account instantly with the use of the FinTech digital banking use. All right, like you rightly said that there is need for digital products for the Islamic bank in Nigeria, for the growth of the institution. In the experts in the country have made a strong case for the standardization of Sharia products, which can serve as a vehicle for supporting the growth of the Islamic finance market. What are your thoughts around this and idea examples of countries in Africa that have applied this? Standardization is one of the major problems that is driving also the industry back. Let's look at different jurisdictions. We have in Malaysia, they follow the school of thought of the Shafi'i. In Nigeria, we follow the school of thought of Maliki. So when a product is approved in Malaysia, you can never use it here in Nigeria. Let me give an example of Tawarru, Commodity Muraba, also Ina by Baxel. These products are being structured and issued in Malaysian jurisdiction and it's approved there based on their standard and guideline. But when coming back to Nigeria, you want to duplicate or use that product. You, can use, you cannot use it based on the Islamic jurisdiction you are using here in Malaysia. So the use of standardization and harmonization of product is very important and useful. Even though in Nigeria, we have, it's, 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 we have just one similar jurisdiction, it's Maliki, but you cannot use the product the Jais Bank is using now and just type it or draft it and send it to CBN is also the same product, but you cannot use it. Also, the product that Tide Bank is using, you cannot use it in Central Bank unless you have also a different product. This is a big case, and this is what driving the product we used to send to CBN backwards. For example, we have a product that has been sent to the regulators up to six months or eight months has not been approved, which is approved, which have been approved on other banks, and they are all similar products. We don't need to waste time on this. That is the surge driving back the business backward. So when we have a standard guideline for each product, be it Mudaraba, be it Ijara, be it Musawama, be it Muraba, be it Mugarasa, it's all the same. The transaction is the same, the product feature is the same, the Sharia audit is the same. And the advisory committee of ESPA that approved this, they are all Sharia scholars. In each bank, they are all the same and they have level the same of knowledge of Sharia. You made a very valid point here that the fact that there is need for standardization. And I would also like to add that affordability and accessibility of the product is also key to the operation of Islamic finance in Nigeria. Yes, you are, you are right, you are right. You are right. 
All right, looking at the outlook for the growth and development of Islamic finance in Nigeria, what will be the key drivers of the market amidst the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic this year? You know, for the issue of pandemic or the outlook for the growth of development of Islamic finance in Nigeria, the only way out is the Islamic fintech again. Because it's the only way that is or allows the business to move. You know, the COVID-19 has hampered the real economy activities such as trading, farming, manufacturing, and other business of Islamic finance. So what is the solution? We need to make things different. We need to think outside the box. So what is the outside the box? We need to make the digital banking very fast, very easier, very accessible, very simpler. That is what we're supposed to be in our banking system. Because we cannot travel to one place to another due to the logistics or due to the, due to the places we are living now. So the way out for this is only the Islamic fintech or the Islamic digital banking is the easiest way. So with that, we can, we can make a capacity development, give awareness of the Islamic finance product, and also increase, increase our activities as a bank by making seminars, conferences, also give scholarship to students who are based by Qardul Hassan. All these types of things can make us very well and well organized and make the institution and make Nigeria as a hub for Islamic banking in the future, inshallah. Yes, creating more awareness and conferences, seminars, and we also need institutions that will also offer Islamic courses in Nigeria. Like we only have Bayago University Kano and Islamic Finance College in Ilorin. So there is need for more increased awareness on Islamic finance knowledge. Expert and scholar, they've already talked about this, creating more awareness in Nigeria on Islamic finance. We incorporate this okay. Islamic finance subject in our university's curriculum. We like this. Yes, exactly. none, of this none of the universities in Nigeria are taught in this up to now. We need to yes. even incorporate this in our tertiary institution, not even the universities. Students will get a background or foundation of what is fundamental of Sharia. What is a brief introduction of what is Islamic banking, at least. The for, them to really, for them to really understand what Islamic finance is all about. There is need for Islamic finance education. Yes, yes there is. There is for Islamic education. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohammed. It was nice meeting you and opportunity to gain further insight on how we can improve Islamic finance in Nigeria through products and services. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bukola. Have a nice day. I'm very grateful to be with you in this afternoon. Nigeria has the prospect of emerging the leading hub of Islamic finance in Africa. For this to be achieved, there is need for developing a robust Islamic banking ecosystem that provides products and services that are affordable, simple for the masses to understand, and an enabling environment that encourages its development by regulators and policy makers. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Join us next week for another topic on Islamic finance. To get further insight on Islamic finance, visit our website www.prosharenergy.com Also, you can engage us on our social media platform showing on the screen. Thank you for watching. Do stay safe and have a nice day.